Chapter 8, Episode 5 Tsara took her clothes off to avoid getting blood on her clothes. It usually confused her food. She smiled her killer smile, the smile of shy innocence. She was an innocent naked virgin in the woods. A dream and a dream. It was the magical thing of youth. Various cultures celebrated this angelic condition of beauty of self in the female. The holy mother of procreation, a heavenly creature to worship. Naked, innocent beauty could disarm almost anyone. Heaven or hell is in the details. At home, she could proceed as slowly as she pleased. The screaming never bothered her. She needed relative silence from her prey out in the park. Sarah punched him in the throat to stun his vocal cords. She broke his knee with almost a gentle move and pushed him to the ground, pinning his hands behind his back to avoid scratching. He knew this was far too rough for compliance. It felt as if he was about to be raped. It aroused him. Sarah rubbed on his penis through his jeans. It helped calm the prey. They would tend to put off thinking about their predicament and start to relax a little. The fear adulterated with the desire made the world appear quite different than it had been and what it would be. A little heaven layered between hell. Oh, where's the camera? Um, I'm going to give, I'm going to give you a little taste of heaven. Sarah reached into her jeans and bent to gently nibble at his neck, just enough for him to feel her teeth. She did not hurry. She wanted him to have time to cha charge up all those chemicals humans were equipped with to motivate them and improve their meat quality. She brought him towards a climax, climax ever so slowly, and when he was pumping, throbbing, sperm about to explode, she bit a piece of meat out of his neck. She sat up to let him see the, fresh, the flesh in her mouth, chewing it slowly and letting some blood drip on him. The question, basically, what the hell, which brought to a full sentence might say, are you, was there. He was at the pinnacle of terror after having visited the Tower of Pleasure. Orgasm might be one of the greatest gratifications. The greatest fear of most any animal was the moment of being eaten alive. He had stopped breathing. He would have to gasp for breath before he could protest. Sara smashed through the, his chest to get to his heart. She ate some of that, then tidied herself up in preparation for getting out of the park and back to the hotel before Susanna awoke. Sara was dallying a little. She had too many thoughts going on. She found it hard to focus with Susanna in her head. She pushed the newly dead man under a bush. Please don't turn around. Please don't delay with questions. We are pressed for time. Pick up your clothes and walk away. Sarah swallowed a last piece of heart meat she had been absentmindedly chewing on, chewing and contemplating, contemplated her options. She was a bit embarrassed that they had got so close as to see her without her noticing. Normally she would have been already gone in a public kill. She would have at least hid herself if she heard people coming her way. She knew there were two men, or at least one man, the other had not spoken. They were looking at a half-naked dead man and a woman putting on her shoes. The man under the bush was not moving. Did they know what she was? Could they have followed her? But it wasn't her they wanted. They just wanted her to pick up her pace. Obvi obviously not cops. Cops didn't sniff around the park at night. They liked to lay beatings to people on the streets where they could be close to their cars and more police. Maybe. For they seemed to be impatient, they wanted parts. They had to be dealt with in a timely fashion. Still, it was not good. If they weren't anthropophagi, they shouldn't know about any. Don't turn around. Don't speak. They didn't want to know who she was. They just couldn't wait. Sarah decided on the more submissive variation of her options. She picked up her top and grabbed a shirt of the dead man to finish washing herself. It took most of her concentration not to turn around. But she didn't, and she walked out of sight. What a fuck up! Sarah finished wiping down and getting dressed while she listened to the sounds of the dead guy being recycled. Then she headed toward getting the fuck out of the park.
You okay, young lady? What? Sarah turned to see a very black man almost invisible in the shadow. A good place to stay out of sight. He had his hands up to show he wasn't on the take. Sarah was frustrated enough with her own stupidity that she was itching to rail someone. She took the three steps to stand in front of the man. He was homeless. She saw it, but not destitute. He seemed to be very much in control of his situation. He looked strong and healthy. He would put up a good fight. I be what you are. You're what? Sarah, Sarah looked at the man. Maybe he was what she was. Sarah was pretty obvious to anyone that was. She had just made a kill and might still have human meat between her teeth. The mad could, man could sense it, even smell it. I look after things here. Sarah smiled. Okay. Sarah wasn't sure what just happened, but she was relaxed again. She continued her run and ran until she was dripping wet before running up to the hotel, up the stairs to their room and into the shower. She hesitated before crawling back into bed. Susanna looked like an angel. Sarah felt like a monster.